This is the most dangerous snake in all of Australia. Oh. I don't think I've ever been this nervous to work with a snake. This is probably one of the worst snake bites you could possibly take. And the Eastern Brown Snake is not afraid to use it. Welcome to the land of venomous creatures. From spiders that can kill you in minutes to some of the most venomous snakes in the world, filming wildlife down under is not for the faint of heart. While working with a licensed snake hunter in southeastern Australia, my team and I got to help with the relocation of several venomous elapids, from red-bellied black snakes to the odd-looking death adders. We got a call early one morning that a property owner had spotted an eastern brown snake in their yard, and while hiking the property to find the snake in question, we came across an absolute beast. Quite possibly the most dangerous snake we could have ever encountered. I am um, beyond out of my element here, so I'm <laughs> definitely gonna need your help on this segment because this is one snake that I've, I've never seen anything behave like this before. My entire context is vipers back home. This can end my life faster than a viper can, and it's a lot more unpredictable. You can just even see his, his eyes there. This guy, this is a smart, intelligent snake. Um, he definitely knows what's going on a lot more than some of those rattlesnakes just kind of coil there and look at you. So, uh, Jack, if you want to help me a little bit to uh, get a grip on this snake so we can properly present it. Yeah, this eastern brown is actually really well behaved. It's a cold morning. Usually, you're unlucky enough to encounter these snakes in kind of the late afternoon when they've had plenty of time to heat up and get really spastic. Um, but we were lucky enough to encounter this one on such a nice overcast morning. He hasn't quite uh, geared all the way up. He hasn't charged his Eastern Brown batteries. So this is not generally very typical of Eastern Brown behavior. Normally this thing would not sit very well for us and would be pretty happy to jump and twitch and twirl and dance all over this trail, um, which of course coupled with that potentially deadly venom can make for a very dangerous reptile encounter. But basically, as you can kind of see, I'm, I'm being very gentle with this thing. What we don't want to do, a lot of people, even experienced snake people, will be a little too heavy handed with this hook. And they'll kind of try and jab it, and poke it underneath a coil or something like that. And that kind of, it, it's irritating to the snake. It pokes them a little bit. You see them kind of jerk and react to it. What we basically want to do is we want the snake to almost not even realize that we're hooking it. Because once the snake realizes that we might have a grip on it, might be a little more inclined to properly defend itself against us uh, because really the only time a snake like this is getting grabbed folks is when it is potentially getting eaten um, but this is a fantastic beautiful large eastern brown this is on the larger side of what you could encounter you can't see because he's coiled up but if we were to like pull him out with the hooks yeah, yeah. this thing is big there's that there's that pose he's got a little bit of that defensive neck going on um, but we'll need to be light on our feet. This is not an animal you can get complacent around. Even, even a calm one like this could easily uh, just jump right up. Could easily, especially once it's facing towards us, it's focused on us. This is an animal that could just launch itself into a knee or an ankle, there, as you can see there. Um, not any open mouth gaping quite yet. He's just trying to figure out where to go. Like other elapids, the eastern brown snake has neurotoxins in its venom. But what's crazy is, it really only has a neurotoxic effect on like cats and dogs. When we analyzed their venom in the lab, we actually found that the neurotoxic components were only a small, tiny fraction of their total venom. And what's crazy is, when they bite humans, they actually have more of a hemotoxic effect. The bite of this snake seems to affect your blood vessels, specifically how well your blood vessels keep blood inside them. As this venom works its way through your system, you start to hemorrhage internally. People will bleed from their gums, bruise all over, have their kidneys fail. It's super, super nasty. But what gets really dangerous is when the blood vessels in your brain start to bleed. With the Eastern Brown Snake, you're not dying from paralysis like you might from a Taipan or many other elapids. You're dying because you literally bleed out internally and it's really, really bad. These snakes don't have a very high venom yield, but they have the second most potent venom of any reptile on earth. And any bite from an Eastern Brown Snake is potentially life-threatening. I have never seen a snake move like this. What I'm used to working with back home in the US are terrestrial vipers. They basically just sit there 
and look at you. And even if they try to flee, it's not that difficult to just wrangle them back in with a snake hook because they're usually really small. This snake is huge. It's huge, it's athletic, but even crazier, it's smart. This snake is a lot more reactive and intentional with its movements than the vipers that I've worked with. And I have to be extremely careful because the Eastern Brown has a gnarly, gnarly bite. One wrong move and I'm in big trouble. He's trying to get a good vantage point by crawling up my hook here. So you see very muscular snakes. He's able to hold, you know, the upper third of his body up off the ground fairly high to kind of get a good vantage point. A lot of times because they're such good sight predators, man, they'll just be looking. You see heads sticking out of this tall grass that's kind of on either side here. And uh, you can kind of see just how important these snakes' eyes are to their hunting strategy because they are just so aware and he's not gonna let us get away with anything that he doesn't want us to get away with. Watch the way this snake moves. You can really see how they're related to cobra. It's that standing up, that really aware, intelligent kind of just probing around. This thing moves unlike any snake I've ever worked with before, and that's exactly why I have Jack here. This particular snake is the second most venomous reptile on the entire planet, beaten out only by the inland taipan. And these guys have quite the attitude. As Jack was saying, this is a very calm Eastern Brown. I've seen these guys in videos just bouncing around like a freaking fire hose. But this is not an aggressive animal. It's totally defensive, even though it's so venomous and it can probably, with, with just two bites, could probably kill me and Jack in a matter of hours. But even still, look at the size of this snake compared to us. Even at its most angry, even at its most venomous, we are still a bigger threat to this reptile than it is to us, and it knows that. And so it wants to defend itself. These snakes have a bad reputation, but they're more likely to flee than they are to bite. In fact, they'll usually disappear long before you have a chance to see them. We weren't sure that we'd even have a chance to feature an Eastern Brown Snake. They're so fast faster than a lot of people can run. Short of finding one basking like this, when you get a call from a property owner, catching brown snakes is ridiculously dangerous. When these snakes stand their ground, they're not doing it because they're mean, it's because they're scared. But the Eastern Brown Snake has a scary freaking threat pose. These guys S up, gaping that mouth, showing those fangs, and they are quick to strike. These things will lunge at you full body and they do it with force. This behavior is exactly why the Eastern Brown Snake is considered to be aggressive. But the thing is, this is actually a defensive behavior. The snake's trying to get us to move out of the way. If you actually watch these snakes move, when they do that lunge, when they do that charge, people are quick to tell you that they're chasing you. But if you step out of the snake's way, it's gonna continue in that direction. These elapids are very intelligent. They know that they have venom. They know they can end your life. And they know that if you're smart, you're gonna get out of the snake's way when it does that lunge. The snake is gambling that you will try to dodge it because then it can use its speed to disappear right back into the underbrush. Like I said, these snakes are fast, but they are fast to flee. They're not gonna actually chase you full force across an open field. What's crazy with these snakes though is they're so passionately defensive that they are really dangerous to work with even if you know snakes. I actually have this trick that I use to film venomous snakes. You might not know this, but I film a lot of my footage on my phone, including a lot of the shots that you've seen of venomous snakes. And what I do is I actually use my tripod as a bit of a boom pull. I'll stick the phone on the end and I'll stick the tripod in the snake's face, hold it really still, and then lock the focus on the phone so I can get a pretty focused shot. This was shot on iPhone, this was shot on iPhone, this was shot on iPhone, and this was shot on iPhone using this very trick. And the whole idea is by holding the tripod way back here, I can get the camera close to the snake while keeping my hands, legs, and body out of strike range of the animal. And sometimes the snakes do strike, they strike at the phone. They hit the phone, it looks, it's a great shot, really cool when I get it, but they never come anywhere close to biting me. The Eastern Brown though, is smart. This thing didn't lunge for the phone. It lunged above the phone, trying to get at my fingers, even though I'm still out of range. These snakes are ridiculous. In this position, you can really see that gorgeous patterning. You know, it, it, from a distance, it looks like a drab brown snake. They actually have this almost metallic little layering in and between their scales, where they get their name, Textilis. They look like they're wearing a knitted kind of pattern when you get close to them. And because of this brown overlaying color, in the undergrowth 
of these bushlands, they blend right in. Most of the time, these snakes will see you long before you see them. That incredible vision they have, they'll be periscoping, exploring in between shrubs and grasses. They'll see you hiking the trail and they'll get the heck out of Dodge long before you ever even have the chance of being bitten. Look at that, that is just a beautiful animal there. The Eastern Brown Snake is a diurnal active hunter, slithering through the grass and underbrush of forests. They're using their keen eyes to hunt for mammals. Their sleek, unassuming color and smooth scales make them almost invisible and inaudible as they sneak through the habitat. They're not a sit-and-wait hunter like a viper. These snakes need to be intelligent as they solve their way through the complex maze of vegetation and they're weighing the risks of chasing down different types of prey. Their venom is lethal to just about every warm-blooded creature they can come across, but to many lizards it's a toss-up. It's thought that some lizards, like bearded dragons, may even be resistant to brown snake venom. So wasting this precious resource on other reptiles isn't in this snake's best interests. The real problem with eastern brown snakes happens when they sink their fangs into people, which is why it's so critical that we help move this snake. Incredibly intimidating to be around, because this is one snake that is just on another level, but it is still cool to see nonetheless. Because of their proximity to people, this is actually one of the most common snakes that people are finding here in Australia, especially in the Sydney area. And they almost have done better in developed areas. One of the few reptiles that have seen their range extend as civilization has grown here. And as a result, they're coming across people a lot. They find their way into backyards, they find their way into gardens, and when bites happen, you have to get to the hospital quick. As dangerous as this snake is, as venomous as it is, fortunately, because they're so common, because they bite people so often, anti-venom and stuff is readily available. It's not like we're rushing to the hospital hours and hours away and, you know, fighting for our lives. It's gonna be a bad time. You're gonna be laid up for probably a week or even weeks if you're bitten by this snake, but the prognosis is pretty high because we're basically just a few kilometers away from actual neighborhoods and actual development. But with venomous animals, and especially these common venomous animals that you might actually come across, I feel like simply keeping your distance is not the best advice. Sometimes you don't have control over whether you're keeping your distance because you might step on one or one might find its way into your house. And I think we have this tendency as people to almost mythologize many venomous animals and make them larger than life, make them more dangerous than they actually are. At the end of the day, this is an animal, and this is an animal that is beholden to the same laws of physics that you and I are. And if you're not in range of their mouth, there is no way that this snake could ever hope to bite you. Yes, the Eastern Brown Snake is one of the worst snake bites you could ever receive. It is, it is the snake bite to worry about if you're in Australia. But learning about their behavior, learning about their anatomy, and learning about their true biology is way more important than just living in fear of these venomous snakes. The better we can come to understand the Eastern Brown Snake, the better we can actually live alongside them and coexist in the same habitat. These venomous snakes are nothing more than simple creatures just trying to make their way in the universe. That venom is deadly, but it's not for us. It's for their food. And even though the Eastern Brown does have that scary threat pose and this horrible reputation, they really just want to escape back to safety more than they want to pick fights with us. The world of venomous animals is incredible. They're among my favorite creatures to feature here on the channel. And I know I've been harping about the Eastern Brown being the second most venomous snake in the world. Well, while I was in Australia, I actually had the pleasure of filming the most venomous snake in the world as well. If you wanna see that video, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.